Hello, my name is Kev Scott from Linear Thoughts. In this video, we're going to talk you through how to update the firmware on your Reolink camera. This is very relevant at the moment as flash support is being dropped at the end of 2020 and most surveillance cameras are using flash, embedded flash at the moment to allow the output of the camera to be previewed at least on the web browser. There are three stages to upgrading the firmware on the camera. First, the first of these is to identify what the hardware number is on the camera. Now this is different from the camera name that you may be familiar with. For example, in, in my house we use Reolink RLC 410 5 megapixel cameras but that is not actually the hardware number, and it's the hardware number we require when we go searching on the Reolink website for the upgraded firmware. The second step is to download the firmware from the Reolink website using the hardware number that we've just identified. And the third of these steps is flashing that firmware onto the device itself. Now these are particularly difficult and hopefully this will become very apparent as we talk through this video, but getting any of these steps wrong and installing the wrong firmware onto your camera could result in some problem steps later on. Just to set a bit of context, we have bought and installed a total of five of these RLC410 cameras in our garden and are using these for capturing nature, which is mainly birds and hedgehogs, but we have also captured the odd frog and heron. They are also very reasonably priced, particularly when they are provided with a 20% discount, which prices them at under £40 each. I will leave a link in the description if you are interested in obtaining one. Step 1. Identifying the hardware number of the camera. To find the hardware version of the camera, the easiest way to do that is to log into it. In my case, I have allocated fixed IP addresses for the cameras, so I can log in through that method. Now that we are in the main screen, the all too obvious Get Adobe Flash Player icon can be seen. Uh, and as previously mentioned, that's a problem we're trying to sort at this particular point in time. But firmware upgrades in general are good ideas for your camera as they tend to come with a number of new features as well. If we now hit the gear symbol in the top right of the screen, which is uh, a settings icon, we now get access to the main uh, settings down the left hand side of the screen and the one we are interested in here is system and then select information. All of the information associated with the camera is presented here and in particular the fourth line down hardware number shows us the hardware number that we require um, for the Reolink website which in the case of this camera is an IPC 51516M. The numbers after that, the, 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 the sub-revision numbers after that are not of concern. Um, we can also confirm it's a camera we expect it to be by looking at the model number above. If we now go back to the settings column on the left and select the maintenance selection, we are now presented with the page that we will use to update the firmware on the camera. The firmware upgrade row is the one we will use to install the new firmware. Note there is also an option to save the configuration of the camera. I tried to use this and it downloaded a compressed file, but I was unable to open it on my Windows 10 PC using WinZip. The good news however is that this is not necessary to use. The firmware upgrades that I have carried out have all managed to retain the configuration previously set. Step 2. Download firmware from the Reolink website. Getting access to the firmware is a simple matter of going to the Reolink website at reolink.com. If you had any doubt, by the way, what time of the year I am recording this, I am pretty certain you will now know. Given that we are trying to download firmware, you might assume the download centre would be the place to go to find that but that is not the case. This does, however, have useful information such as a spec sheet. The place we do have to look is the support centre. 
where we find the firmware download page. We are now able to type the hardware number that we obtained in part 1 into the search box and that brings up the list of firmware downloads applicable to our camera. In general, you would want to pick the newest version of firmware. Having clicked on it, we get a description of what is new in this version. We can see in particular that this shows the flash problem is being fixed. If we now scroll down the page, we can see the different model numbers that are supported and our RLC-410-5MP is one of them. The important thing to note here is that this table has nine cameras listed and each has a different firmware version, so we need to be careful about picking the correct one. Choosing that firmware version results in a zip file being downloaded to my PC. Opening that zip file shows me two files. The first one of these is the pack file and this is what we are going to install onto the camera itself. The second of these files is a help guide. Opening the help guide provides us with further information about how to carry out the upgrade, which I will cover shortly in this video, and also gives us another confirmation of the hardware version. I can see that everything is as I expect it to be, so we're good to go. Step 3. Flashing firmware onto the camera. Logging back into the camera web page, we can go to the maintenance page, as we did in step 1, and on the firmware upgrade line, click on the Select a File button. This will then allow us to select the pack file that we downloaded in step 2, which should appear now on the screen as the file we are planning to upgrade with. Note that we want to retain the old configurations, so do not tick any of the checkboxes. When we press the Upgrade button, the process begins. I have sped up the video here. On my system, the upload took around 19 seconds and the system upgrade took a little less than 2 minutes. The user is then taken back to the login screen on the camera and logging back in shows us a video now working without flash. Note that this preview view is nowhere as good as the video that the camera produces when you are recording. I hope you have found this video useful and if so, please hit the like button. If you're interested in tech videos in general, it would also be great if you could subscribe. That's all for now. I hope to see you again soon.